Hello, assalamu alaikum. <coughs> Uh, welcome to the lecture five of the series of designing and implementation of SPI pipeline group. Uh, in the last uh, lecture, I guess we have covered the topic of how we can convert the execute part of the single cycle code to a pipeline version of it. And I've shown you how you can hold that and I've told you to design a test bench for it and you can verify that at your end. So let's quickly go to the recap of what we have done in the last few lectures and then we will going to uh, move to other to their lecture topic. So today we are just going to cover the implementation of the memory cycle that how we can convert the memory operation your memory uh, access of single cycle per, per code to its pipeline version of it. Uh, but before going, let's get have a little bit of uh, recap of the pipeline data part that what we have seen this data part in the first lecture, I have told you that how we are going to convert our single part. It is same as the single cycle part, but what we have just included that we have added some registers in it, which is converted it into the pipeline version. We have divided the whole uh, uh, architecture into five different stages. The first stage was we have known called as a fetch stage, uh, fetch cycle, which have, have been coded and implemented. And the second stage we have known uh, called as a decode stage. The third stage we have called as a execute stage. So today, uh, previously we have designed all these three stages and we have designed these files. Now, today we are going to design our memory stage, which is the fourth stage of our pipeline. So, let's move towards it. Uh, the memory cycle data is very much uh, simple. It doesn't uh, contain very much of the hardware. It only contain a data memory and it contain a memory state registers. Uh, it, as is shown in the radio diagram, there are few seven signals which we have uh, declared as the output of the execute cycle will going to be as a, act as an input in which uh, three of the signals will be going to utilize in this stage and then the furthermore four signals will be forwarded as directly without any changes and we will have been going to have a new signal which is as a read data signal which will be going to as our write back state definitely which is going uh, we are going to code in our future lectures and here as I uh, mentioned already that I have shown some X uh, signals which have declares that all of these signals have been already as uh, declared as an input to some of the previous cycle stages so we don't have to care about them Not only we have to care about the inputs and the output we are going to generate from this thing so i guess this is a very simple uh, stage that doesn't contain any of lots of the explanations so without any further delay let's move towards our coding part of it uh, again definitely i have all things have been open already so i hope you all have these files with you <coughs> Uh, before that, let me show you our GitHub repository where I've kept all of these files. So definitely this is our GitHub page. I've already uh, provided a link to our description as well. And here is the RISPI pipeline core uh, GitHub repository, which contain all the source files, which will be necessary for you to design uh, the pipeline version of it. So you can definitely clone it and use it uh, at, as per your convenience. Or you can design it from the very sketch by going uh, looking at the previous lectures of single cycle before, and then you can use that for those files as well. So let's start uh, by first declaring our new uh, file, which I will going to name as a memory cycle dot Okay, so as all uh, all the time we do that, we just have to copy and paste some of the. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, the only main important part in this uh, file will be the data memory. So I'm just going to have a simple include in it, which will be known as the data memory. Sorry, right? All of the includes should have, have to remove because I have only one file which are going to be included in this uh, code. Right, then I have a module name uh, declaring as a memory cycle definitely there are two signals which are we already always declare as a default signals which are clock and reset uh the other signals which i've been getting from my one of my execute cycles so let's open it and the output post of my execute cycle will become the input of my <coughs> uh, register so just like i'm going to copy the output post and just simply going to place it here Let's first go to the end module. Right, so declaration. Right, so all of my input will become output will become my input. 
here. Right, so let's not forget to mention our clock and reset signal, which we have forgotten previously. And I'm just going to copy these names and just it. So we are <clears throat> just take it. So we are done with our uh, IOS declaration and have been declared all the inputs. Now the second part we have always that we have declared creation of in term wires, which we do whenever we uh, declare a module, then we do the declaration of in term registers. Right. And the last what we do that we have declared. Oh module. So definitely I have only single module here, so I'm just going to copy the data memory and just going to uh, initiate here by naming it as a D map, which uh, uh, represent the data memory. I have a clock. Reset, white enable, white data, address, read it, data, and that's it. Right, so quickly I'm going to add the syntax here. Okay, we have know that the clock and reset are our global signal, so definitely just going to copy and paste them here. Now let's see how forward the right signal, the right enable signal which we are getting is the uh, basically, the mem right m signal, which is uh, uh, attached to the right enable signal. So all we have to do is to connect the right enable signal, uh, right mem right signal to right enable. For the right data port, I have the ALU result, which is coming as an input. So it will be act as an address for my data memory. So I'm just going to connect ALU result m to my right data port, and uh, sorry, we're going to connect it with my address port. And then for the right data, but I write data M is coming into the memory location. So write data M is here. I'm just going to place it right now. And for the read data, definitely I need an entire wires. So let's declare it here, which will going to be a 32 bits. So I'm going to name it as a read data M, which represent that is the read data signal of M stage, right? I'm just going to connect it. So this is what little bit of very much straightforward logic. I know, uh, uh, just connecting our module with IOS, uh, which we have here. And now what we have to do, uh, all we have to do is to declare the registers and just connect the IOS to the output register and just map it outside. So we know that reg, reg, right, uh, reg right M is just coming as an input and going as an output is also being the same. Here, ALU result M is also uh, uh, acting as an output because definitely we are going to use it as a write back stage. And then RDM and RPC plus four are just as an input and output post. And here, you now I have a new register which will be a read, read data. So you can see that we have going to have registers of one, two, three, four, five, and six registers here we are going to use. And there are no any output assignment directly without any register. So definitely we don't need any of the output posts right there. So just going to declare the registers here and uh, Okay, so PC source E, uh, definitely this will not going to be my input. So let's just delete it. Uh, as it is an output port, but it is not an input port as a memory stage. So write write M, M write M, result source M, these three are posted. So just let's copy in all of it. Here, here. Then reg write M, M write M. Okay, now adding a subscript of R, to make sure that these are the registers declaration. Okay, all of these are registers are single bit. And then I have a register of five bit, which is RDM. And then I have a register of 32 bit, which are PC plus four. MR, okay, I don't need my write data M, so I'm going to 
I need ALU result M. Okay, let's see if we need a PC target E here. Uh, definitely PC target is not going to be uh, our input as well here. So let's just delete it. And same here, it is not going to be an output. Definitely PC target is an output which is directly mapped towards the first state. So definitely we got it here. Uh, the new register which I'm going to declare here is one, I forgot, uh, that is read data. M underscore R, right? So these, uh, let's just count it out. We have a three, seven registers to be mentioned. Let's uh, make sure that we have seven registers. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, I guess I've included. Okay, we don't need write mem memory right as well. So here now we have three, four, six registers which are going to be used in our uh, memory state. So let's include the logic of our And we say register logic as we always do. We are going to use the always. Always at or set of clock or the neck edge of the reset. So just begin it. And then if the reset is active low, so you have to initialize all of these registers. All right, so with a binary zero register. Okay, so we are done with the initialization of the register. Now we have to just do it to the else begin concept of it. And what we are going to do that we are going to just map our signals here, All right? So right, right, right M, but we're going to map it right, right M. And then source will be connected to the source M. Then RDM will be connected to our RDM, definitely. And PC plus four and just going to connect it to PC plus four. Yeah, let's confirm it. PC plus four. And then ALU result M will be connected with our ALU result M and read data M will be connected to our read data. Right. So I guess these are simple logic which have uh, we have mapped our values to as a register as it is without any uh, delay in it, right? So now what we have to do is we have to assign the declare chain of output assignments. We just assign it quickly, assign first. I'm going to just take turn and so things. Okay, now for the right side, I'm naming as a W, which represented the W signal of the right backstage. It's not necessary that you just follow the naming convention I am doing here right now. So definitely you can have your own conventions, but just keep the track of the signal so that you don't get uh, distracted or you don't get lost when you are trying to debug your code.
Right, so the output assignment have been done. So just what we have to do is now have to declare them as the output codes. So I'm just going to copy this. Not do that. Just copy this. So now we need one more signal that will be our read data looking right. Yeah. So here you can see that all we have declared all of the output posts. This is one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, and six output posts. So just then copy it and just declare the output here. So the first two signals are the uh, two bit signals, one bit signals, so we don't need any. And the third signal is the five bit signal, and the rest of them are 32 bit signals. So, here we are done with our uh, designing of our memory states, uh, which we have designed here. So, let's go a little bit of review. Uh, definitely, we have a single module initiated, which is data memory. We have some of the inputs which are clock reset and uh, coming from the signals come of the coming from the memory stage. And then we have some of the outputs which will be going as uh, behaving as the output and input towards the write back stage. We have only single interim wire, which is read data, which is an output code of the data memory. And then we have six interim registers we have used to uh, act as a pipeline registers. And what we have done is we have initialized these registers as a initial with zero values when the, there's a reset as applied to our design. And when there's a no reset, a reset value is active high. So all the values which is coming as an input will going to be mapped on the registers or the value coming from the output of the module will going to map on the register. And finally, we have just declared the output of the register and mapped them to our output codes. So this concludes our implementation of the memory cycle of our pipeline stage. So I hope you uh, this make the concept very much clear that how you can convert the memory execution part your memory part of the single cycle code towards the pipeline version of it by just including the registers in it. So stay tuned for the next video in which we are going to design and implement our write back stage. And then definitely we are going to uh, run some code on it to verify that our design is completely working on it or not. So right now I'm not going to make any testament for it again. It is your task to design the testament for it and verify it for your design. But just for the... Uh, Let's check for the syntax that either we are not getting any syntax error in it before we uh, just close this video. So definitely by running the I very low command, you see I didn't get any of the warnings or any of the errors. This shows that all of my syntax which have been put is correct, but definitely the perform uh, execution is correct or not. Definitely you can see by uh, running a simulation test on it. So I hope you will going to do that. And uh, that is all for today. So thank you very much. Love this.